Hey guys, thanks for watching our videos. Um, if you're listening to just the audio, head over to our website. We have the latest videos up every time. Um, the one you're looking for is not there. Just head over to our YouTube page. It's where it'll be at. Don't forget, sign up for our newsletter. You get 10% off. You get exclusive weekly content. And first chance at giveaways. And sometimes we might just give away stuff for free. Um, don't forget to follow, follow us on social media for some uh, good times too. Hope you enjoy. Live, live, love. All right, guys. I had to stop trying to do that for the longest time. I ended up doing it again. Oh, I'm a tit bit slappy. Hello again, everybody. This week we're talking about feet. In particular, we're talking about plantar fasciitis. I'm okay. going to go over a few helpful tips, tricks, and tools, essentially, for it. For, you know, most people have kind of heard of plantar fasciitis, especially if they're a runner. But it happens to a lot of athletes. Bottom of your foot. Yes, I'm wearing toe socks. Yeah. When you look at the bottom of your foot, I'm talking about right through the arch helps keep that spring essentially that is your arch or the primary arch so there's that really tough tissue if you feel the bottom of your foot move your toes you can feel it or if you press into your foot it's real tough kind of like the IT band it's really tough tissue um, what ends up happening is back at the heel is where it inserts and either you get kind of an abrupt pull or over time there's just a lot of tension into it and you're pulling and you get an inflammation there and you get plantar fasciitis. Very painful, very irritating to deal with. Um, so let's talk about the first one with runners. Oh, there it is. Excuse me. So with runners, it's typically an overuse. Um, so either their training has increased suddenly or they've just not been keeping up on their recovery um, and kind of their mobility stretching. So what ends up happening is that's just the weakest link that usually shows up. So when there's a, a tissue issue essentially, what happens is the weakest point out of any mechanical fault or training fault, it's going to show up usually in soft tissue first, so that's why you'll have like a strain or sprain before you have um, kind of a uh, stress fracture. Hold on. Welcome back. Almost died there. Um, so, so, so typically overuse. Um, it's either a mechanical fault usually, um, which is kind of exacerbated by poor running shoes, and then or an overtraining, which basically just means they've spiked. They're training usually too quick. Either their quality workouts, so doing like repeats and threshold miles, or just an increase in miles altogether. That's why there's that 10% rule. So first thing is, is making sure shoes are okay. So always go get them checked out by, uh, unless you know a lot about shoes, um, get them checked out by somebody at a local shop. See if they're worn down or make sure that you're in the right shoe. If you're in a stability shoe or if you're in neutral, whichever one you need to be in. Um, so check your shoes first. Then it's going to be training. Did you recently make an increase and was it more than 10%? Or has anything else besides your training changed? Um, and basically if you've increased your training at all, it's been a pretty decent increase. It's most likely a thing. Then the third option is looking at your food and recovery. If you're eating sufficiently, and then you're also taking care of yourself after workouts, before workouts. So doing your stretching, um, doing your rolling, um, those are the three major things to look at. Now when it comes to kind of an abrupt injury, um, you can have with runners too. It happened to me uh, years ago when I was running in a little indoor bubble, really sharp turns, um, stressed mine on my right foot. So can be a sudden high impact jumping and landing. It takes a bit of force. 
So if it's been used a lot for like a basketball or volleyball player, if it happened to land one time either just wrong or it wasn't quite a proper landing, it can happen where it was under stress and it just it pulled and got inflamed. Um, it's going to be the same thing though. A lot of it's going to come down to rest, which is always the worst part. So hard to kind of take off training, but cross training and not doing as much on your feet, either jumping or running, which is hard for a lot of runners to hear. The problem is, is running, walking, everything, it's just going to put more and more stress on it, which is just going to not allow it to kind of settle and let that inflammation go down, which means you're going to be in constant pain. Um, there's a few other things that you can do. If you're in good shoes, um, and you're doing pretty good on your food and recovery, the next thing I would look at, so we look at footwear, recovery, and stretching. So am I keeping my tissues supple, as to say. Um, third thing would be inserts. So we use two different types of inserts. And there's two separate ones, and there's a reason we go with one over the other. So before I show you those, though, the reason why I would suggest an insert is for temporary relief. Um, so a lot of people will choose to use an insert, either go to a doctor and get a custom-made one. It's very expensive, by the way. If this is your issue, I wouldn't do it. Um, I would save yourself some money and just get a support insert, like ones I'll show you. Okay. But the main reason is just to use it for short term. It's basically going to add extra support, hence the name of support insert. Basically, the support in the arch will then alleviate the pressure that it feels because it's trying to maintain that shape. So if we artificially basically shove something up there that's going to maintain that shape for you, that you can then relax and not pull as hard, so therefore I can allow it to kind of settle and that inflammation to go down. If I'm using it for long-term relief, then I'm not really actually going after the root cause, which we'll cover down the road here on this video. Okay. So the first thing is get an insert that will help alleviate the pressure from day to day activity, walking, standing, um, and allow that tissue to settle a little bit. And then add in some of these exercises and some of these other okay. There's two types. Okay. The form inserts are actually way more popular than Spenko and Superfreak make them very similar. The reason these are not quite as popular is that this style is made with a thermoplastic bottom. So this, very hard. Ow. Okay. So yes, it offers good support in the arch because it's hard. But the problem is, is when you heel presses into this, you can literally feel that you're pressing into something that's completely solid. So it can cause some pain just on that back end of that talus, that heel bone, just because it's like walking on rocks um, or concrete, essentially, because it's one solid flat piece, so rocks would be pointy. But I digress. Okay. So yeah, some people do like these, um, but the problem is, is that heel tends to be the most uncomfortable part, just simply because of how hard the plastic is. But people really do like the super feats, so it'd be one of those of try them in your shoe and see how they feel, if you like them or not. Um, these are a few dollars less, but most people will go with these, the form formerly known as arch mold. Okay. Very similar, still solid support. Solid, but a little more give, so if I press on it pretty hard, I can get this to move, which is kind of nice, makes them a little bit more comfortable to wear. The next thing is, too, with these arch molds, these forms, <coughs> excuse me again, is the fact that you can either, A, bake them in the oven, like 200 degrees for two minutes, just enough to warm them, soften them up, put them in your shoes, stand in them for two minutes, Ooh, excuse me, or simply insert them into your shoe and wear them around for a day or two, and they'll form to your foot, hence the name form, or arch mold, because they would mold. Um, so they'll get a little more customized. Usually just recommend wearing them because eventually they'll wear to your foot and start to form a little bit. Um, and it'll get a little bit better life than if you bake them. Not enough to make a huge
huge difference, but people tend to just wear them. Um, so that would be the first recommendation for people is always to get like an insert just to help in the short term to alleviate a lot of that pressure that happens day to day immediately after the injury. Kind of like wearing a brace where you wear it to kind of help alleviate things. But in the long term, if you just rely on that, then it's a crutch and you won't get any better. Okay. The biggest thing that made a difference for me is what's called the Strasbourg sack. Okay. Absolutely love the Strasbourg sack. If you go to a doctor, they'll potentially give you a boot, one of those big air casts, or they'll give you a slightly less cumbersome kind of boot style that you wear at night. The most pain happens in the morning. The reason for that is, or well, when you sit for a while. But the main reason is when you sleep, is what happens is you get plantar flexion. So your toes point down. Okay, so you sleep like this, which shortens this tissue. Then when you stand up, you go from this length, and it has to elongate. And when it elongates, it pulls from that position, and that's why the most pain is in the morning. You put that pressure on it, it's pulling a lot more. So we do with the Strasberg sack is. I'll kind of show you with mine. It's been chewed by the dog. So up top here, as you can see the missing part of my sock is up along this top that sits around here. There should be another Velcro strap with a loop. This up top here is another Velcro strap. Keeps it up top of your calf and a loop that this would go through. So it's gone, just like a normal sock. Okay. But the loop that should be here, <laughs> so there's another Velcro strap and a loop. This should be attached top of the knee. So then this piece would loop through, and you could adjust the tension you sleep with that. See, just like that. So you'd sleep like this. So you keep your toes up. You can do a very mild stretch, and then as you build along, you would increase the angle. That was the biggest difference maker for me. Because um, you get a gentle stretch, but it also keeps the tissue elongated at night primarily. I recommend that to everyone who has issues with plantar fasciitis. See if you can find a local store that has one. If not, you can buy them online. They're 40 bucks. So in Michigan, that's 42.39 with tax. Sorry, we handwrite our receipts, so I know all the tax. Um, this is the second biggest, well it's the number one really. If your shoes feel okay, if you already have inserts, which most people do before they get the, the straps for stock for plantar fasciitis, those are the two things that will make the biggest difference. Doesn't matter all you're rolling with a frozen water bottle and everything else, this thing is a lifesaver. So if you have plantar fasciitis, get the straps for stock. Okay. One that I don't recommend, um, I just haven't seen it work too often, and considering the success that I've had with the Strasbourg sock um, and the form inserts, for $20 you can get what's called a plantar fascia sleeve. Meh. It's this little guy. Goes on. open toe. Never felt it gave as good of support that an insert ever will. Um, and if you're active, this isn't going to make a big enough difference. So I don't usually recommend it to people. Um, we don't sell a lot of them. Most people don't request them anyways, just because they're not the best use. Um, as good as the idea is with them to add a little extra support. 
I don't find that work very well, so I wouldn't go with the plantar fascia sleeve. Um, so, if you're really going, if you're having issues with plantar fasciitis, um, the first thing is is make sure your footwear is good. Unless it was just an abrupt injury, then either way, you're going to end up having to take some time off. Got to recover. Okay. Then the uh, Strasbourg sack. That's going to be the biggest. Love those two things. Um, I've got custom orthotics I wear. Mine are only three quarter length. Mine are really cheap to get, which was nice. Um, and then the Strasbourg sack. I bought a few of them. One because I thought I lost one. And then my dog chewed one. That's awesome. So um, I love having it just in case things start to flare up, which luckily they haven't. Um, but I do keep an eye on it because it's susceptible to coming back and it's irritating. Okay. Now we're going to talk about a couple um, other things that can really help. A lot of people hear like the exercises that for strengthening, um, getting blood flowing. So like the towel crunches, um, I recommend that. But rolling with a frozen water bottle, I haven't found to be as useful. So what I moved to is golf ball, standard golf ball. Um, or you can do with like a tennis ball. This is actually one of the uh, yoga tune-up mobility balls. This one is a little bit softer than like a lacrosse ball, so it has a little bit better um, kind of surface feel, so it could tack a little bit better, so it stays a little bit better than like a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball. I like this one um, a lot. Well, something like a tennis ball, I'll tell people to start with, just because it'll be the easiest on the tissue. It's not as hard and it's larger than eventually moving to a golf ball, because a golf ball can begin better. So, like, literally sitting here. I dropped it away from me. I literally just. Oh! I have so many feet. Sit here. I literally just. Make in the back. Put a little pressure on. Roll to the outside. Roll the inside. Go back and forth. Up to the center. That's usually a pretty painful spot. I'm sit there. Literally sitting at work. Like you don't have to take a sock off for this. I just happen to have the right one on. Left sock still on. Can sit there. If you're stuck doing like an email, even take the time while you're writing an email, just kind of roll your foot. Okay. Trying to build to, you know, five or six minutes twice a day, doing it kind of mid morning and then later in the day, even. Awesome. Yeah. Then it's helpful to stretch the back end. So a lot of the tension through what's called the posterior chain to the back side, so like hamstring, gastroc, which excuse me. When everyone thinks of the calf, they think of the big guy. That's your gastroc, gastrocnemius. Favorite anatomy word. Okay. Then you have your soleus, then your Achilles, a big giant cord that roams in. And then you've got your plantar fascia. Okay. So everything on that back end. So there's a few stretches to obviously hamstring. Okay, make sure that's not too super tight, which sometimes it is with people. Then we do a well, one-man camera crew today. Okay, yeah, standard calf stretch. Okay, keep knee straight, leaning forward. happen here is I'll hit that gas drop. Then foot stays the same position. All I'm gonna do, whoop, bend my knee. Okay. Then I'm gonna start hitting my Achilles, my soleus. Okay. Those two are awesome. Third stretch I absolutely love is this little guy. I will start standing, kind of squatting. Then I'm going to do squat and kneel forward. Okay. 
I'm gonna allow my <laughs> one side's really tight. Um, I will allow myself to kneel. My chest is forward. So this is the kind of position that I'm in, guys. Just kneeling forward. I'm not sitting back. Okay. Then, as I feel more tension, I can sit back there. But I want to keep my toes tucked. Okay. Because as soon as they come out, I'm not really doing anything. So I want to make sure they're tucked and I'm pushing down. And I'll sit here for a minute or two. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Literally. Even if I was standing straight up, I wouldn't move my butt back. Okay. Then I can put more pressure this way. So I can use a couch, hold myself on the couch, or I can simply put my hands down, which is what I've got here. Sit back for more of a stretch. Lean forward if it's intense. two things are important. The rolling, that last stretch, that last stretch is my absolute favorite for plantar fasciitis. I can do that gas rock and slowly stretch all the time, but if I'm still not quite targeting there, it's bad actually on my left, it's super tight, um, just no, the right was okay, but I just let that too. Um, that's actually what I'm going to be doing when I'm done with this, is stretching that. Plantar fasciitis, we see it a shit ton at our store. Um, very popular in runners. It shouldn't be something that happens to people if you're not experiencing it while you're watching this. Um, I would do some of that stretching and some of that rolling and making sure that you're keeping up on that so you don't have to deal with it. Because plantar fasciitis is terrible for people to get rid of, um, usually because they don't stop training, so they just keep running on it, which means it will last longer just because it's still inflamed and then you're just keeping it inflamed by still using it. It's just going to happen. Like if I had bicep tendonitis that I kept doing curls. This is not going to allow my bicep tendon to settle. It's not going to allow that to settle because I'm using it. So if I run and I have plantar fasciitis, it's not going to heal as quickly just because I'm still using it. Um, so if you're having plantar fasciitis, make sure your shoes are okay. Or if you did it an abrupt jumping injury, just taking some time off. Um, it may be good to get some inserts. Most people, it's just a good recommendation to have simply because that will allow your plantar fascia to kind of really have some relief. It will take that pressure off through the daily activity and you can allow it to kind of settle a little bit um, without having to take quite as much time off, most likely. Okay, three, if you're dealing with it, Strasbourg sack. Greatest thing. Less cumbersome than a boot. So that's why I like it, especially at night. It's easier. It's awkward, yes, um, but definitely better than using a boot or anything else that you'll find. Um, most people who have plantar fascia just know exactly what the structure for sack is. And that's why it's number one. Then, if you have plantar fascia, or if you don't have plantar fascia, but you're worried about your feet, okay, that are kind of achy, um, roll them and stretch. Do the calf stretches, the two variations, so with the knee straight and the knee bent, okay? And then do that plantar fascia stretch, okay? Hold them for at least a minute. I would do two to three sets of a minute, at least, of the plantar fascia stretch. A minute's pretty intense for that one, so I would leave it at a minute. The calf stretch and the soleus stretch, so those two variations with the knee straight and knee bent, I would do those for two to three minutes, twice per side. Um, that's after activity. If you're feeling a little tight before activity, you can do short bursts of like 15, 20 second stretches to kind of loosen up. But most likely you just want to smash. Um, so you just want to use the foam roller and roll your calves. So doing that as well, guys. Um, so that's a little bit of plantar fasciitis. If you have any questions or concerns, um, 
shoot me an email directly if you want to, paul at trainathletics.com. Um, write us a comment below. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, we're on Twitter. Uh, oh, we're on Facebook. Um, so you can write us a question there if you want to. Um, most likely somebody's going to have the same question as well. If you've got an injury question or a training question, feel free to let me know, and we'll answer that for you as well. Um, as always, guys, live with love. And, uh...